let's talk small practical changes. What's good, Jalani Appleton? Here, if you have a couple minutes, a couple of messages. I want to talk about making changes in our lives, but I want to make the parallel to me choosing to stop using music in the background of my videos. I decided to stop using music in the background of my videos because once you put that music in the background of your video, you cannot separate the audio, and now you have lost your audio in event you want to use it again. But for me, it wasn't so easy for me to just abruptly stop using music in the background because I'm so used to hearing the beat playing behind my voice and kind of amplifying the message. So slow changes. Slowly, I started lowering the volume. I would put it on a five, then I put it on a four, then I put it on a three, then a two, then a one. And now it's at zero. That's a story I tell to make a parallel to as you're trying to make changes in your life, you don't necessarily need to be so abrupt especially when you're taking other people along with you on the journey. For you to do something cold turkey, one, if it's not coming from a cellular spiritual level, it's going to be so harsh and it's going to hit you where two weeks from now you're going to be back doing your own thing. But if you slowly add steps and add things to it and you're like, okay, I want to start making these changes in my life, but I want to implement slowly. Y'all see the damn bug on my glasses? I'm in the process of attempting to go vegan as often as possible. I ain't gonna say I'm vegan and then y'all see me out somewhere eating a lobster. I don't know if I could ever give up seafood. But yesterday my husband posted a video because they went to the reptile store and while they were there, they were feeding the snakes. Well, this is a once in a lifetime really cool experience. So let me record it and post it, right? The way that that mouse's face looked when it was being squoze to death was too much for me. I didn't watch the whole video, I just clicked on it because he was like, did you see it, did you see it? And I was like, okay, let me go see it. And then I clicked on it and I saw the tear and pain in that mouse's face. And I get the circle of life, I get it, I get it. But then it made me think about how they go about killing chickens, how they go about killing cows, how they go about killing any animal for me to consume. Not to mention those foods are acidic and causing mucus in my body and the reason why I can't probably bend my fingers now. So all of that on top of just the humanity and I know they're not animals, but that's some cruel sh I was like, I need to go vegan for me and for the animals. One less chicken in the slaughterhouse, thanks to me. But I'm gonna do it slowly and it's going to be a slow process. I can't abruptly stop living the lifestyle that I've led, even though my body is rejecting damn near everything that I eat. Like my body is like, you gonna do it or you gonna do it? Which, what would, how are we gonna do this? Is it gonna be easy or just gonna be hard? Cause we gonna do it. So when you're making these changes in your life, be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself, and know that you're doing your best and set the intentions. Everything needs to have intention. Everything needs to have intention. That is something I'm also learning. And just think, go from a five to a four to a three to a one to a zero. And your keys. Thanks. All right. Be respectful and responsible. Please. Hurry. I won't hurt myself. I won't damage the car. You need to follow me, or do you know where you're going? I guess that's the question I should have asked. Yes. Okay. Hi, Mom. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm about to move it. Yeah. Bye, Bealy. Love you, too. That's how you move it up and down. Underneath here is how you adjust your seat. Here's how you adjust your mirrors. Your lights are on autos. So take your time. Any any accident you get in will be because you're rushing. So don't rush, ever. Yo, there might still be something green on my nose. I was taking my, I think it's chlorophyll, whatever they derive from the green from the plants. I take that daily. And I got some on my hand right there and I touched my nose, and now I got a green nose. I sure wish I had a green thumb. Nah, it's still brown. What's good, Jalani Appleton here? If you have a couple minutes, got a couple of messages. So I remember being 14 years old, not looked after, and hanging out in the streets with the drug dealers and the criminals, the criminals and the drug dealers, and the prostitutes, yes. One of my hangouts was the whorehouse or at the crack spot. One of the two, you was going to find Lonnie, but you were not going to find me at school. No, did not make it out of the eighth grade because I dropped out. Why? Because I was hanging out with the criminals, the drug dealers, the prostitutes, and the pimps. I remember hanging out at the whole house and this guy came in, hard day of work. He's looking around and he sees my young ass. He doesn't speak any English, so he points at me and he says, her. Ernie, who was the pimp, the OG, he was like, nah, she ain't one of them. And the guy looks back at me, he's like, her. And Ernie's like, didn't you hear me? She ain't one of them. 
And shout out to Ernie for not trying to turn me out, though I think BK would have had a problem. BK was the big homie. I'm sure you know what BK stands for, but BK was my play cousin that I subsequently lost my virginity to. I have two virginity lost stories. Ain't that something? BK thought he took my virginity, but BK actually had his ping ping between my booty cheeks, so he didn't know the difference, and I didn't tell him. Yeah, I lost my virginity first to my play play cousin. Ain't that something? And I think he fucked my friend. Ernie's niece. Man, this is a tangled web. Anyway, what I'm saying is, I was at the whole house and Ernie was like, nah, she ain't one of them, but I was over the whole house because I was over there with Doretta and BK hanging out with the homies, and eventually we made it back to the hotel room. Now, these may be multiple days of occurrences because there was always some shit going on besides learning and teaching and raising. So I'm sitting in the hotel room and I'm looking at these two young niggas, they in their early 20s, mid 20s, loading the nine millimeter up with one bullet. And I'm sitting in the corner, I'm just watching these niggas as they place this nine millimeter muzzle to the side of their heads. Now my ass is sitting in the corner and I'm like, hmm, as these dumb niggas pull the trigger. These motherfuckers are playing Russian roulette with auto semi-automatic weapons. Like, nigga, you don't know when that bullet gonna jump into that chamber. Like, and I'm watching this and I'm desensitized to it. And now that I'm in my 42-year-old brain, I'm like, what the fuck was going through these babies' heads? Because they were babies. That they would put a loaded gun to their head and pull the trigger for a game. So when we say we don't have a black man problem, we don't. We have a black boy problem. And once we address that, we save our black men. Word on the curb is just good luck, y'all. What's good, y'all? Lonnie Appleton here. And a bird has now shit on me twice under this tree. This tree right here has shit on me. Twice. Okay, so the tree, and it wasn't one bird, it was multiple birds, but I have been pooped on twice under this tree, and this comment sparked my curiosity. Mars! So I went and I looked it up, and it said that it's a good sign, it's good luck, prosperity, and one of the de uh, the definitions was really cool it said it's a sign of a strong spiritual connection so a part of my meditative practice is i journal and i have been journaling like for hours and so i believe the journaling not i believe i know because i think that we say i think and i believe because we want to doubt our knowledge and we want other people to feel like we're not you know confident in our stuff because exuding confidence in ourselves makes other people feel small but i'm done shrinking myself so i know that i am writing a book by journaling and so a lot of stuff that you're not getting here is going to be in the books because it's plural because this stuff just keeps coming out and as long as it keeps flowing i'm going to keep delivering it so two of the reasons why a bird pooping on you sign of good luck they said it's a one in five million chance of getting pooped on by a bird and i've been pooped on twice actually three times well the first time i got pooped on by a bird i was a little girl i was walking and it pooped next to my leg and it splashed up on my leg so that's kind of a uh, we're gonna keep you alive long enough for you to get to the good luck that's not the good luck now but we're gonna keep you alive to get to the good luck poop i believe but the first time it pooped on my leg and the second time it pooped in my damn hand. Like what are the odds of a bird pooping in your hand? And so good luck, prosperity, wealth is on the way. And my ancestors, I've been doing this altar work. They said, they said it's your angels it's pretty much shouting you out and saying, yeah, we up in this bear. So my mother is up in this bear. And I got some downloads. I got some, I'm getting some crazy downloads during meditation. And so I'm so excited to share some of the stuff with you here very soon. I'm receiving stuff about the church. I'm receiving stuff about the necessitation. Is that a word? Necessity of touching. I'm receiving stuff about um, healing sexual trauma. I'm receiving stuff about why are men feel undervalued i'm receiving so much stuff right now and it's just amazing and i'm excited it's a good overwhelming 